If you have a Royal Caribbean cruise coming up in the next couple of weeks or even months, you should expect a lot more passengers on board than we have in the past. And I've got to look at what this all means up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and I wanted to give everybody kind of a look at where we are right now. Things are changing all the time. Ever since cruises restarted back in June of 2021, we've seen a lot of changes in protocols and expectations as it comes to cruising. And what I told you all maybe in January has changed what it's like now in March and going forward, things are going to change as well. So in an effort to kind of keep everybody up to date, and have a good idea of maybe what to expect, I wanted to give everyone kind of an update of where things are because one trend that I've seen over the last couple of weeks is the ship capacities are going up. That's not a bad thing, by the way. We'll get into that in just a little bit. But it's important to note that the amount of passengers on board a cruise ship over the last two to three weeks has gone up compared to what it was in February. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Chief among them, there's two major reasons. Number one, COVID cases are down around the world. And number two, Royal Caribbean has opted into the CDC's highly vaccinated program. As a result of this program, Royal Caribbean is able to relax a number of protocols, and that also has a lot to do with the fact that COVID cases are down in general. They're kind of tied together, but the bottom line is things are changing, and the benefit for Royal Caribbean is they're able to now bring more people on board a ship because they feel confident in the protocols that are there can keep people pretty much safe and, of course, the communities that cruise ships visit as well. Before we get into numbers, you might be wondering, well, Matt, what is the capacity going to be for my cruise coming up next week, next month, next year? And the answer is nobody really knows. Until you actually get on board your ship, there is no way to know in advance how many passengers will be on board a particular cruise. Watch the comments below. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who don't watch this video <laughs> and just simply write below, hey, how many people are going to be on my ship or how do I know how many people are going to be on there? No one knows in advance. Once you get on board the ship and after the ship sets sail, you can go down to guest relations and ask them for a number. And this has been a common trend for a Royal Caribbean blog readers. In fact, there's a running thread on the Royal Caribbean blog message boards that tracks the amount of passengers on a given sailing where somebody will go on board a ship and then report back, hey, there are this many passengers on board. And based on, well, anecdotal evidence, there seems to be more passengers on Royal Caribbean cruise ships now than there were just a couple of weeks ago. I mentioned the fact that Royal Caribbean seems to be confident in their protocols and that they can increase guest capacity without increasing the risk of everybody on board with, you know, an outbreak or something like that. However, it's also worth noting that there is a big difference between cruises in March versus cruises in February and January, and that is spring break is here, whereas January is a very slow month and February can be not as quite busy as March. That being said, February does have President's Week, and for a lot of folks, that's a vacation time. And of course, January and February was when we were in the middle of the Omicron variant, whereas now that's subsided quite a bit. All of this is me just telling you this is what we would call circumstantial evidence in court, not necessarily indicative of anything. But I wanted to share some numbers from recent cruises that kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about. On Adventure of the Seas, March 14th sailing, they were at 2,933 passengers, which is 94% capacity based on double occupancy. Mariner of the Seas, March 17th sailing, had 3,000 passengers, which is 89% capacity. The Wonder of the Seas, March 11th sailing that I was on, 4,396 passengers, which is 76% capacity. And Anthem of the Seas, March 20th sailing, had 3,281 passengers, which represents 78% capacity at double occupancy. Now, passenger counts going up shouldn't be a surprise. Royal Caribbean has said that their plan is, by the time we get to summer, to be back at basically full capacity again. Now, when that's going to happen and how that's going to happen, Royal Caribbean did not divulge. So certainly higher capacity counts shouldn't be that much of a surprise. They've got to get from basically where they were, which was around 50 to 60 percent to 100 percent sometime between now and sometime in the summer, whether that's June or August, I don't know. But they're moving in that direction, certainly. Now, more passengers on a cruise ship isn't a bad thing. If you're hearing these numbers, thinking to yourself, oh, my goodness, this is awful. It must be super crowded. Remember, this is actually a sign of healthy demand for cruising and return to the norm of what ships were prior to the pandemic. I have to admit, I got used to lower capacity. It's just something that, you know, virtue of the fact that I cruised a lot between June 2021 and today, I was able to take advantage of a lot of ships that had very few passengers on board. It was nice. It's kind of like when you time things right, you go to the supermarket really early in the morning, there's nobody really there and there's no lines. That's not the norm, but it's nice to enjoy while you can. Certainly, I took advantage of it, but now we've got to get readjusted to back what it used to be. And certainly, if you talk to me back in 2019, having 98, 100% capacity wasn't out of the question. It was pretty much the norm. That's what you would expect to have on board. 
So in 2019, if we had Adventure of the Seas at 94% capacity, we would have all thought, my goodness, this ship is empty. So this is a matter of really just readjusting to what it used to be. Moreover, we love Royal Caribbean. We love the cruise lines in general, right? So we need to see them get back up to financially stable strength again. And the only way they're going to be doing that is to be able to be back at basically full capacity again. But I also think it's really important to have more guests on board because certain activities just feel more active. Theater shows, musical performances, and trivia are all much more well attended, which in my opinion, adds to the energy of these experiences. So what does this all mean if you have a cruise coming up? Number one, don't expect your ship to be at 50% capacity. I think those days are pretty much gone, barring some sort of a major variant and some sort of a setback for the cruise industry. The cruise lines and society in general have learned that we've got effective protocols here that work. And on top of that, the case counts are not the end-all be-all. One case is not one too many. We've all got to live with COVID, and that's the reality both on land and on cruise ships. But the good news is the protocols on board, the core protocols, COVID testing, the vaccine requirements, sanitizing around the ship, and enhanced air filtration all contribute to prevent any kind of major outbreak on board a cruise ship. With more passengers on board, it's now more important to pre-plan as much as you can. Number one, getting your check-in time before the cruise. We talked about this as being an important thing to do anyway, but if you really lollygag with it, it might mean getting a much later time for check-in. Number two, for activities and especially dining and things you want to do on board, it's critically important that you get reservations as soon as you can. Still, as of right now, you cannot pre-book entertainment before your cruise via the Cruise Planner website. I'm quite frankly not sure why that has not come back yet, but it hasn't. So what that means is when you get on board your ship, connect to Royal Caribbean's Wi-Fi, go on the Royal Caribbean app, and then make reservations for any shows you want to see. If you have an unlimited dining package, or any dining package for that matter, make sure you make reservations on the first day of your cruise. When I was on Wonder this season, Wonder is a bit of an anomaly because it's a new ship. And there's a lot of people who are excited about it. But the restaurants, especially restaurants, were really selling out of spots in advance, even for people that had dining packages. So you had to kind of play it by ear later on. So when you get on board the ship, make your reservations as soon as you can. It's more important because there's more people that you're competing with once on board. And yes, more passengers on board means that the chair hogs are back on the pool deck. The nice thing about when we had 30, 40, 50% capacity on ships is that you really didn't have to compete for a seat by the pool on sea days because there just wasn't as many people around to do so. Nowadays, yeah, if you roll out of bed and go to the pool deck around noon, you're not getting a chair by the pool. So if that's important to you, just like it was in 2019, you got to get up a little bit early, get a seat out there and take advantage of that. It's not great. It's not ideal. I do wish they would do something about that, but it's just the reality of cruising. It's been the reality of cruising. So we're just back to that. And I think a lot of this is just reacclimating ourselves mentally to know what to expect. And certainly if you're following these tips in this kind of a video, you're going to be at a major advantage over most people who simply roll on the ship and have no idea of what to expect. And they'll be behind the eight ball. Meanwhile, you'll be able to take advantage of these tips to have a better cruise experience overall. Now, with these increased capacities, there are some things that have not changed. And that's not a bad thing. Number one, the E-Muster drill is still here. Nothing has changed there, and I don't think that'll ever go away. This is the new safety drill in which basically you can complete the muster drill and listen to the emergency signal on a mobile device before the cruise, even once you get on board the ship. And then all you have to do is go to the physical muster station to complete the process. In addition to that, the buffet is still self-service where crew members will serve you instead of you serving yourself. I love this change. There is one little tweak to this in that drinks are now self-service in themselves. So if you want a glass of water, you can grab a cup and put it against the dispenser and get it there. Likewise, the cups that are already ready for you, you can grab there. But for the actual food, it's still being served by crew members on board. And of course, Royal Caribbean is still requiring pre-COVID tests before the cruise for everybody and everybody 12 years old or older to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19. No, there's been no word yet about boosters or anything like that other than that Royal Caribbean recommends them, but they're not required as of today. I want to hear from you what you think of these changes. Are you excited for going back to a cruise which feels, quite frankly, a lot like it used to be before the pandemic? Let me know in the comments below. If you've been on a cruise in the month of March, I'd love to hear your thoughts about what the experience is like, what you liked, what you didn't like. Let me know below in the comments. While you're down there, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our video, and turn on notifications. Hitting that like button and subscribing really helps our channel out a lot. It means a lot. So if you can do that, I would appreciate it. Thanks for watching. This has been Matt from RealCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.